Okay, we're going to talk about nuclear chemistry today, specifically focusing on nuclear decay. And in order to do this, we need to first talk about the nucleus. And the nucleus is held together by what is known as a strong nuclear force. It's the attraction between the protons and neutrons. And this is what actually holds together the nucleus. The, pro the neutrons are known as the glue that hold together the nucleus. The, in addition to the strong nuclear force, though, in the nucleus, there is electrostatic re uh, repulsion between protons. And the reason there's electrostatic repulsion is because like charges will repel each other, and protons are positively charged, so they tend to repel each other. Much the same way magnets are, repel each other. So if you hold two magnets together, you'll notice that they push against each other. That's exactly what happens with the protons. So in order for a nucleus to be stable, we need the right ratio of protons to neutrons for that nucleus to be stable. Without that ratio, the nucleus will break apart. So what we have here is the belt of stability. And it's a graph of all the stable isotopes that exist. On the x-axis, we have protons. On the y-axis, we have neutrons. The line that goes up diagonally is a one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons. And you can see where the stable isotopes are. They start out at a one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons, and then gradually curve up to a 1.5 to 1 ratio of neutrons to protons. So if you're not in this belt of stability, if you're an element, and you're not in this belt of stability, then you're going to undergo some sort of decay to get to a stable isotope. And there are several different types of decay. Alpha decay is the first one we'll talk about. And the alpha decay is where the parent nucleus, the one that's decaying, spits out or ejects an alpha particle. And an alpha particle is a two-proton, two-neutron particle, which essentially is a helium nucleus. Um, this results in a daughter nucleus, which is the product of the decay. Uh, and that will obviously be a new element because it's lost two protons and two neutrons. The second decay we're going to talk about is beta decay. And in beta decay, what happens is a neutron becomes a proton by ejecting an electron, which we call a beta particle. And it's a zero mass negatively charged particle, which is what an electron is. So the neutron becomes a proton, which means the atomic number of the parent nucleus goes up one to become the daughter nucleus in that. So we have a new element that is formed. In positron emission, we have a parent nucleus ejecting a positron. So a proton becomes a neutron as a, positron, as a positron is ejected, and we have the atomic number of the parent nucleus going down one to make a daughter nucleus. That is a new element. In electron capture, we have a parent uh, nucleus capturing an electron. So the proton becomes a neutron by capturing an electron, and therefore the daughter nucleus has an atomic number one lower than the parent nucleus. Also in electron capture, it's such a high energy process, it produces x-rays. And the x-rays are extremely high energy forms of light that are released in this process. Then we have gamma ray emission, where we have no change in the identity of the element. We just have a really, really high energy nucleus that um, has been given an extreme amount of energy. The most common form for this uh, type of nucleus would be in a supernova where a star explodes. And what happens is it's just so high in energy it relaxes or releases energy in the form of gamma radiation. And then the last one we have is spontaneous fission. And in spontaneous fission what we have are a very large parent nucleus that breaks down into two or more smaller uh, nuclei, daughter nuclei, because it's just too unstable. So, with the exception of gamma ray, uh, ray emission, all the modes of the decay that we're talking about are due to an unstable ra uh, ratio of protons to neutrons in the nucleus. So what we'll do here is we'll put up our belt of stability again. We got our graph with the stable isotopes, protons on the x-axis, axis. Um, on the y-axis we have neutrons, and what we're going to do is draw a line for 84 protons. And at 84 protons, that is the limit to the number of protons that a nucleus can have. Any more than 84 protons, we have an unstable isotope 
that will form that it exists and it will not stay as it is, as it is uh, it will either undergo alpha decay or it'll undergo spontaneous fission so if you had a nucleus with 88 uh, protons it's going to undergo either alpha decay or spontaneous fission most commonly alpha decay because spontaneous fission is rare <coughs> so in, but it will undergo that type of decay if you have more neutrons than protons um, than the stable isotopes say you should have you're going to undergo beta decay so if you're in this area of the graph up here you're going to go beta decay so that a neutron can become a proton and you can work your way back to the um, belt of stability. If you have less neutrons than uh, protons, then you're going to undergo positron emission or electron capture. So protons can become neutrons and work their way towards the belt of stability. Um, these are the different types of nuclear decay and why they happen. And in the next video, we'll learn how to write actual nuclear decay reactions.